It's your boy. No, 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 no. You're, yo, 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 done. That's what you are. You're done. Do you understand? Hello. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's your girl, Lindsay. What up? And I'm one half of the EBS Educated Ooh. Black Siblings podcast. <clears throat> and you guys have made it, if you're here right now, to episode 10. <laughs> Y'all, we have been here. T- Go over it. You are wilding out. Listen. <laughs> It's you are not allowed. Number no, no, 10, no. You baby. are not allowed to have any soundboards, any clips, any music, nothing. And to my right, who are you? Introduce yourself. Yo, this is the EBS podcast. I am Gilbert. You can call me G. You can also call him Doing Too Much. Out of breath. Captain yes. of Ridiculous. To my do- we already intro, didn't we? You intro. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't breathe, so I didn't. My God. <laughs> To my left is my sister introduce you. I've, I've already done it. You did it? Already? Let's move on. All right, it's episode number 10. <laughs> oh my God. Sis, you how you feeling? to a great start. We made it. We, <laughs> Gilbert, we made it. We, we made it. We here, man. And it feels good. It feels good it to be 10 episodes good. in. I feel, I feel older. I feel wiser. And I feel ready to go. I'm ready to attack this podcast today. I feel that. So before we jump in, we just want to say thank you guys for listening to the podcast, yes. for subscribing to the podcast, for sharing the podcast. We really, really appreciate it. The, uh, the audience base has grown a lot. People are responding, um, talking to us, sending in suggestions, sending in disagreements, and that's exactly what we want. Um, so again, for first time listeners, this is the Educated Black Siblings Podcast. We are black, we are educated, and we are siblings. Uh, what we strive to do here is to have dope conversations. We really, really want you guys to engage with us. Um, just so you guys know what's going on, the way that we usually start out is with some foolery, and then we jump into some serious topics, what's going on in the world, politics, um, etc and then after that we jump into what's going on pop culture and then every single podcast we have a top five list of some sort top five top five today's top five is going to be our top five favorite female r&b artist slash female soul artist that slash this list Beyonce. is about to be ridiculous so just go ahead it's buckle gonna be in great. get ready it's gonna be great. I'm ready for this convo. Cause... So Lindsay, how, how's how's life? Yo, life has been real good, man. <clears throat> As you know, I'm a teacher. This school year has been going extra smooth, like butter. I've been chilling. I'm a basketball coach. The season is about to start, so y'all about to hear me extra tired. But I'm super excited, and man, life is just good, man. What's up? I love, I love, I just love my life right now. I'm chilling. What about you, Gilbert? Man, I've been mad sick. Okay. I, I probably sound like real congested a little bit, but you know what? It's okay. That's like a, that good radio voice. Yeah, it yeah. brings it out in the podcast. The people want to hear it's, that. It's the quiet storm, They want to hear the phlegm in their we ears. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> That's in everyone. All right, so let's jump right into the serious topics today, man. Okay. Um, no floaties or anything. Nope, no we're going to jump right into the deep end. B.O.B. has started a Kickstarter. Nope. To prove that the world is flat. And right there, sir, we can stop. Your career is flat. So I don't need any more from you, (laughs) B.O.B., because I don't have time. Listen, B.O.B., Kyrie, any other fool that thinks the world is flat can pack up their things and you can leave. Why don't you find the edge of the world that you think is so flat and fall right off? Because I don't have time for B.O.B. So I've never asked you this before, but it sounds like you believe the world is round. Bruh. (laughs) You believe the world is round? I'm mad What's your proof? That. What is your proof that the world is Bro, round? We have pictures. Photoshop. Photo Photoshop. Are you a conspiracy theory? Uh, do you think the world is flat, Gilbert? No, what do you I look think? like? Boo boo the fool. Boo boo the fool. <laughs> but it's real. Bob started a Kickstarter campaign so that he could send a satellite into space, take pictures, and his intent is when those pictures come back. The world's going to be flat. Listen, you know what? I'm okay with that. Let foolish B.O.B. and the foolish people that want to throw away their foolish money go ahead and support that. Listen, B.O.B., let me tell you what you're not going to do. You're not going to get my money. I don't support you in any way, shape, form, or fashion. You had a couple of good songs. But other than that, I'm not giving you nothing. Take your pictures, spend other people's money. When the world is round and you realize it, get back to me. So I'm going to read a quote to you. You tell me who you think it is. Okay. 
The United States has great strength and patience, but if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. I'm not doing this today. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm not doing this. I've just gotten back to the place of peace in my life. I'm not doing this with him. It's Donald Trump. Oh, I know. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, he's been very active on Twitter in the last couple of weeks. Tell me about it. Donald. <laughs> so Donald has threatened not once, not twice, not in his the privacy of his own home, but in front of multiple leaders of countries that he was going to annihilate North Korea. <laughs> he, he said, and I quote. And you quote. The little rocket man oh my God. is on a suicide mission for himself. Why is he calling people names? Because he has tiny hands and he feels insecure. Go ahead. <laughs> so, I can't. So he's taking a hard line on Korea, North Korea. My question for you okay. is, is he in the wrong? Yes. So North Korea is a dictatorship yes. who is starving and depriving his country. Yes. They have documented concentration camps, right? Okay. I feel like his heart is in the right place is what I'm saying. Whose heart? Donald Trump. When Donald Trump says he's going to wipe North Korea off the face of the okay, planet. Okay, he's, he's probably going to back the wrong like, way. Like, what do you... <laughs> What what does that imply? Oh man, it's all right. It's all right. Kim Jong Il, whatever the name is, and all of the other millions of people that live there. Sorry about you. Let me kill you all. Oh, that's right. He's not going to liberate them. He's going like, to destroy them. He's, he's literally saying, "No, no, I'm not going to liberate you. I'm just going to get rid of you. We're going to pretend like this just isn't a thing." Hmm. And I just can't. I don't. How do, how does Donald still have a job? Somebody needs to explain to me. Because you know I, who won't be along for much longer? Who around for much longer? Who North Korea? According to Trump, that's what he said on his Twitter. He said. I, I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> he said, if they how continue he... down this path, they won't be around how for much longer. How is he president? How is he president? And how are we letting him say these things? Where are the advisors? They got fired. You are right. Did you see earlier that somebody else just resigned? No, apparently they had they did something wrong. But I don't even know who's in his cabinet. If he has a full cabinet, I feel like it's just his kids running his. It's just presidency plates. It's right just now. plates in his cabinet. I'm. <laughs> Is it? He just got China. Just China. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. It's the worst. I also hate Trump. I actually hate Trump. But yeah, all seriousness. All, all I was about to say, all seriousness aside. But I mean, all jokes aside. Yeah. Um, I'm here for the jokes today. By the way, that's I need the jokes. It's, 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 you know why really I need the jokes? Because for. Donald Trump has literally put me in a mental state where I can't deal, and that's not good. The President of the United States should not be making decisions that affect my mental health. But he thing. was he was so active on Twitter this past weekend that Bro, he was I, going in. I had to log off of all social media just so that I could make it through the weekend. You know you can block him, right? I don't follow him. Oh dang! But I have to seek him out because I will wake up in the morning and there will be trending topics on Twitter that said Trump's gonna kill everyone. Trump hates black people. Trump cusses out NFL. He did do those things. Like, I don't know that he hates black people, but he. he you don't. How many black people did he go after this weekend? Quite a few. What did he call black people? This week. Sons, sons, of, sons, sons of, of what? Sons of beasts. Exactly. Can't yeah. even say it on the podcast. Nope. But he's the president. I'm not going to say I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there on the floor. Let y'all digest that. We'll get there. <clears throat> we'll get there. I'm jumping ahead. All right. So back to North Korea. Um, the, the thing that bothers me most about the North Korea situation is not that he's taking a hard line against Korea with the sanctions or even the threat of military force. It's just the way that he is talking to the leader of a sovereign nation. It's just kind of... Like, it got to the point where the where Kim Jong-un actually wrote a letter, <laughs> like, directly addressing Trump. And what was and he crazy... he called him a dotard. Yeah. I've never even heard that word. Have you... Had you heard the word dotard before? No, but What's that's new word? an accurate description. Like, I don't... Like, you don't even know what dotard means. But I feel that it's right. I feel that it's You right. can't side with North Korea against your president. I will about their feelings about Trump. That's treason. Is it? Yes. Well, he's committing treason. He threatened to kill millions of people. That's not treason. It's brazen. Okay. Well, whatever it is, I hate it. And I hate him. I just, I can't do it. You can't go around threatening people, Donald, for no, well, okay, there's some reason, but you can't kill them all. That's it. Plain and simple. I don't, I don't have time for him. Like, I really don't. Speak softly and carry a big stick. He's, there it is. He's doing the opposite. He's speaking loudly and, well, carrying a big stick. So I don't know. You, just, you talk too much, Donald. And we want less. We want less from you. Thank you. So he had quite a bit of oh my God. back and forth with the NFL this week as well. Mm -hmm. How'd you feel about that? About the NFL? 
No, not the NFL, but about Trump interacting with the NFL. I feel like there are so many other important things going on. Shout out to all the people on Twitter that instead of dealing with Trump's nonsense, that you were tweeting stuff about raising money and relief efforts to the people that have been affected by hurricanes in Puerto Rico. Like, I don't have time for Donald Trump. Why do you have so much time to harp on incorrect dealings with the NFL and protests when you should be out here worried about Americans who are out here struggling, literally begging and pleading for relief, Donald. Why Why are you so concerned about the comings and goings of athletes right now when you should be doing other things? That's how I feel about that. But So I know it. Um, this has probably been said a lot, but I did I did find it disturbing that... So we had a situation where there were not, not suspected, but literal, literal white supremacists having a rally that ended mm. in bloodshed. Mm. And... Um, he refused to harshly denounce them. He said good were, on both sides. So there are good people on both sides. Mm. Now, when he's talking about majority black men, Same right, men. that are peacefully mm-hmm. and quietly mm-hmm. protesting for the people in the back, he called them sons of bitches. Mm-hmm. Excuse my language. That's what the president said. That's what the, so... <laughs> the president said. And let's pause. Where did he say it at? In Alabama. What was he doing? He was at a rally. Why are you still having Trump rallies? Because I want to make sure that everybody <laughs> knows that we won. Bro, you won. We are winning. Why are you still campaigning? It's crazy. It's over, Donald. You won. And I feel like this term is overused, but when I was watching that rally, it was literally a racist dog whistle. Like, that's, it's not even veiled anymore, no. right? Like, that's what he was... No. And even if so even if Donald I'm not saying that Donald Trump is racist, right? But, but even if he even if he is not racist, he is clearly appealing to that sentiment he's intentionally. A hundred percent pandering towards racists. It's and crazy. I feel like at this point he knows it and he's not shying away from it. Like he has embraced Because that who is his... left to support him at this point? The, the right? sensible Republicans in 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 politics are all like, Well, slow down, dude. True. Like he was, did you see him going at McCain? He was mm. going at McCain all day on Twitter. It's, it's crazy. I don't understand why this man still has a Twitter, man. Like, so, let's take this away. So I don't want to talk about Trump anymore. Um, oh wait, we're before, going we move, to. before we move away from Trump, he came for Steph. <laughs> Let me tell you what Steph you want to do. Steph ain't never hurt nobody. Let me tell you, little little tiny light skin Steph. <laughs> My gosh, he ain't done nothing but ba- make but cute I babies. But I tell you what. Okay. Like a returning king. Yes, Lord. A conquering Lord. Tell me now. The king, well, uh, LeBron James, well, came in. Yes, he did. And did what needed to be Delivered done. a word. He called the president a bum. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, no. LeBron James oh, no. said, you bum. <laughs> like, that's the worst. That's I don't ever retweet way. on Twitter, but I retweeted that like 10 times. It's hilarious. Um, I loved it. Thank you, LeBron, for saying that. Because he is a bum. He is a bum. Again, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Trump. You I know? didn't realize that the word bum carried such a negative connotation to it <laughs> until he said it. Like, when I read you, you bum. bum, that hurt my soul. Yeah, it was I bad. I said, my God, I've never been called a bum before in my life. You bum. Oh, my. It hurts, don't it? A little bit. It stung. Mm. I didn't like that. Protesting. Okay, let's do it. How you feel about it? In general? Yeah. or <laughs> In general? I so, think... let, well, actually, actually yeah, let me, specify, let's, let's right? take a step back. The NFL protests that are happening with the the kneeling. Okay. Um, so I was a little. Did you see what the Cowboys did? Yes. How'd you feel about that? So before we can even talk about what the Cowboys did, I think we need to take a larger step back. Okay. So this all started with Colin Kaepernick wanting to make a statement about the current state of the treatment of colored people, black people, people of of minorities. Um, and police brutality and how law enforcement was treating them. So originally, Colin Kaepernick decided that he was going to sit during the national anthem, okay, in protest. So he did that, and then eventually was approached by somebody who was a veteran and said, "Hey, like, like that's not respectful for the flag." And Colin said, "Well, what can I do that is respectful?" And he said, "Well, you could kneel. That's still showing respect for the flag and also getting your point across." So he started kneeling for that cause. Um, which clearly ruffled feathers. It caused a whole domino effect. Other people joined him. People didn't like it. And ultimately, it seems that has cost Colin Kaepernick his job. Okay. Um, now, with that being said, 
I fully and wholeheartedly support Colin Kaepernick and what he did. Now, it upsets me that Colin didn't vote because I feel like if like if you want real change to happen in this country, you have to vote. That's the one time that you have an opportunity to voice your opinion. So he should have voted. But other than that, Colin, I'm all there for you, boo-boo. Kneel away. Go ahead and use your platform to speak on injustice in this country because we need it. Now, let's talk about this weekend, okay? Now, the protests that happened this weekend currently with the NFL, I feel like had nothing to do with the original cause that Colin Kaepernick set forth. I feel like all of these protests that happened this weekend were in response to Donald Trump and what Trump said, because Colin had been kneeling for years. You've had weeks to kneel. There was preseason and other games to kneel. And it was kind of in reaction to the things that Trump said. And I found myself, when Trump tweeted the things he did about the NFL, I found myself going, I hope every single player takes a knee this weekend. But then I had to stop myself and say, well, hey, is this still to protest to shine a light on police brutality? Or is this an anti-Trump protest? And I think that's kind of, that's a, that's a gray area there. No, so that's an excellent point. So that was um, something that stood out to me specifically about people that, we're talking about Jerry Jones in particular, the, mm-hmm. the whitest of the white men, right? Like, <laughs> didn't he like fully support Donald Trump and give him all the money? He did, and um, but but what's interesting, right, is you see, so we're on to, we being black people are on Twitter and we're saying, oh look look at look at Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones is supporting us, right? Yeah. But Jerry Jones commanded his team to take the knee before the national anthem. Yeah. And he forbid anyone on his team from kneeling during the national anthem. Yeah. And to your point, Jerry Jones was not kneeling in support of our cause. Jerry yeah. Jones was kneeling in protest to the president telling him what to do, what to do. with his private business. Right? Yeah. And what's interesting is that um, to further put that, Donald Trump, again, tweeted, but oh. while Dallas dropped to its knees as a team, they all stood up for the national anthem. Big progress being made. We all love our country. And then he goes on to to big up Jerry Jones, saying that he's a, a great guy for telling his players that they would get fired for sitting during the national anthem, right? So again, I think it's very, very important to point out, until Jerry Jones comes out and says, I was kneeling because I want to bring light to the injustices that are happening to minorities in this country like yes yeah. that's, that's not why he was kneeling so i think that that's very very important that we draw the line there that everybody that was kneeling this weekend was not kneeling for the same cause that colin kaepernick was kneeling for and so. kind of to to tag team on that i don't know if you saw this but one of my favorite people on the planet um drew Brees, who was the quarterback for the new orleans saints tweeted out as a way to show respect to all our Saints team will be kneeling in solidarity prior to the national anthem and then stand together during the anthem. And, and my, my deal here is, is that's not the point, right? That's not the point. That's not what Colin was trying to do. Okay. I get that y'all in the NFL have a brotherhood and you have a code of arms or whatever, and you want to stick together and that's fine. But I think that this is actually doing more harm than good. Let's not detract from the issue that people of color are treated differently and to less of an effect than, I mean, white people by police. That is that is a thing. We know this. I am black. I know this. I've experienced this. I understand this. There was there was a specific reason behind why Colin Kaepernick started kneeling. This is not about the NFL. This is not about the anthem. This is not about the flag. And while I appreciate the the spirit of unity on these NFL teams, and I think that's good. I think that they should come together and unify as brothers with each other. I think that we need to refocus and understand what this is really about. It drives me crazy when people have an issue with Colin and whoever else that are kneeling. It's like, instead of you having an issue as to that the fact that he's kneeling, why don't you focus on why he's kneeling? That's what the That's where the conversation needs to be about. Don't let Trump detract from the fact that this is about inequalities in our country. And as an American citizen, we should have the opportunity and the right to bring up grievances with our country. Trump said it wasn't about race, though. Okay, well, Trump's a liar, and the truth's not in him. So it is what it is. I feel you. I feel you. Um, The one thing that I will point out, though, is that, I don't know, I, I think that the protest is being successful, right? Because. 
the point of a protest is to bring light to an issue. A protest is the marketing campaign for your issue, right? Mm -hmm. And we are, we are for good or for better or for worse, we are talking about the issue. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. has been in the news cycle since yeah. Colin Kaepernick first revealed why why he was kneeling. Yeah. So I think that that is good. I think that I hope that the the players continue to to kneel and that they those that are kneeling for our cause I hope that they continue to to voice that. Yeah. Um I'm not I'm not going to stay on this topic for too long, but the one thing that I do find interesting is that again, I, I come from well we come from a military family, right? So it's like I have the utmost respect for the flag and for our country and for our troops, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if somebody was doing something that I thought was disrespectful towards the flag, that would upset me as well. If somebody was turning their back on the flag, I don't know, giving the middle finger to the flag, yeah, to the extreme, burning the flag or whatever. But these people are kneeling, in, like you said before, in, in an attempt to still be respectful while doing their protest. Yeah. And what I find is interesting is that people find it offensive to kneel quietly to yourself during the national anthem but it's completely okay to have a confederate flag mm. which was another country mm. that fought against this country mm. or to have a swastika mm -hmm. that's not disrespectful to the flag i'm saying there was i read an article a couple of minutes ago about how Ohio is about to reinstate Confederate flags and Confederate symbols. Was Ohio and, even in the Well, Confederate? that's the point. It's like, Ohio, you weren't even in the Confederacy. So that's, how was that not just a complete sign of racism? Mm. You know what I mean? So I, I think it's interesting that the same people that are saying that he's disrespecting the flag are the same ones that are, you know, supporting the Confederacy. But it is what it is. I don't have time for nonsense. So. Nonsense is ridiculous. And you know what, man? <laughs> when you come for Curry, you just... I don't understand, man. Listen. Steph Curry is not hurting Steph nobody. Curry is a national treasure. Like, I don't know. We and must protect, we protect Steph Curry him at all costs. All Let us costs. 100%. I'm sorry. I'm with you. He is our light skin wonder. It, <laughs> stop it. You stop, you stop it right now. You stop it right now, I dear. love it, man. I love it. But um, I don't know. Um, you know what? What else is going on in the world? Sis? Too much is going on. It's making my head hurt, and I'm tired. <laughs> Continuing to send prayers and thoughts to those that are affected by the hurricane nonsense. Yeah. It's always um, it always sucks to see on social media where we'll have like a weekend of hashtagging for an issue, and then we just forget about it. But it's like those those people that were affected by those storms are still affected by those storms so i would encourage you guys to those of you that were tweeting about it and were putting on your facebook statuses i would encourage you guys to still do that to still try to seek out um ways that you can donate your time your money your efforts yeah. or whatever to those uh to those particular efforts um but yeah man i think it's um i don't know the, the world is the world is interesting man does does so going back to the protest thing, because I think it's interesting because we're seeing athletes use their platform to talk about issues, right? Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be okay with that, we also have to be okay with athletes having views that we don't agree with, right? So yes. it's like, if you're going to be okay with Kaepernick kneeling, um, again, I'm not saying you should support Trump, but... If Tom Brady supports Trump and he wants to wear a Make America Great Again hat, it's like you can't you can't have it both ways, right? Listen, that he may, has the right to support Trump if that's what he wants to do. That may him. change my personal opinion on Tom Brady, but I don't I don't care. At the end of the day, he throws football good. So like I don't I don't care. But if you want to use your platform for whatever purpose that you want to, that is your right as an American citizen. Just know that you may receive backlash from that. So I think that segues us nicely away from politics. Nice. My question for you is, how much does an entertainer, an athlete, a celebrity's personal views or personal actions, how much does that or should that weigh in your support of that person? That's interesting. I think I think it depends a lot on that in particular entertainer. You know, if there's somebody that banks a lot on their personal life, if there's somebody that is good that puts that out there on a regular basis, then I feel like it's I mean, it's almost you're supposed to kind of judge them on what they're doing in their life. But if they clearly separate their personal life from, you know, their art form, 
then I guess what they're doing in their personal life, I mean, it's not going to affect me. I don't care. Like, if you're making music and it's good music, but you're over here uh, doing whatever it is that I don't agree with on the side, I mean, if that's not a major part of your music, then I might still support you. So I, th I think it just depends on that artist or that, that athlete or whoever. I'm at the time of my life where I feel like I have a target on my <sighs> And because of that, I should make smart decisions. And recently, I didn't. Can we stop? Um, <laughs> can we stop? <laughs> I would like to stop. To be in any way, shape, I think it's I think it's important to remember that our celebrities are not perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about <laughs> let's talk about the little chocolate drop. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, so Kevin Hart, right? <laughs> so Kevin Hart was caught cheating. And I think that again, this segue. No, 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 no. Kevin Hart wasn't just caught cheating. Kevin, <laughs> let's explain the entire situation. All right, let me let me rephrase. <laughs> Kevin Hart was caught cheating on his pregnant wife. There it is on her birthday on week her birthday <laughs> weekend on video, <laughs> mind you, on video, on video. Like check you could just out, cheat out. in secret. Kevin. Check this out, cheating. Infidelity in general, wrong. Y'all know how I feel about side hoes. Don't do it. You should be faithful to the one you are with. Go ahead, let your wife hear. If you, I, <laughs> I love my wife. I love you, baby. I hope you're listening, right? I'm not saying you should cheat, right? Oh, here we go. But make this point: <laughs> if your wife is pregnant, you should definitely not cheat. You should not cheat on a pregnant wife. That's good. Right? That's good. <clears throat> Even more so. <laughs> Now, not to take the pregnancy inside. Okay, okay. I'm not saying you should cheat. There it is. But if you're going to cheat. However. One weekend, you should not cheat. <laughs> <laughs> the birthday weekend, Kev. On her birthday, Kev. Then you put them together. Your eight months pregnant wife carrying your seed I feel on like her birthday. The only thing she can do is name the son after the mistress. That's true. <laughs> you trash. But no, anyway, um, I, I got to get the jokes off. But what I think is interesting is there are some people that are going to say, I'm not going to mess with Kev anymore after yeah. this, right? And for me, I think that I think that the point that you made is excellent, right? It's um, I think that it's imperative to consider how much of that person's life is in the art itself, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like when I look at somebody like Carmelo Anthony or um, I say James Harden. I don't know if James Harden is married, right? Because I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't know if James Harden cheats on his baby mama every other week mm -hmm. because he shoots basketball well. I don't care what James Harden does in his personal life. I don't have to hear about James Harden's personal life when I watch him shoot three-pointers, right? Yeah. But the, 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 the place that people are going to start having an issue with Kevin Hart is if Kevin Hart is going to get on a stage mm -hmm. and make jokes about the fact that he cheated on his pregnant yeah, wife on same. her birthday weekend, a lot of people are not going to be okay with that. But see, here's the issue. Let's go ahead and all of you people over there that are like, yeah, you right, you right. Go ahead and step on down from your high horse, sir. Well, because I don't know if you've been paying attention, but Kev isn't new to this. No oh. offense to his beautiful pregnant wife, but <clears throat> she was the side piece. Jesus. Kevin was married before, and he stepped out with his now current wife. And y'all laughed at Crazy and Tracy. Y'all laughed at the the woman's name is Tori. Tori. Y'all laughed at Tori. Y'all laughed, laughed at Tori. Laughed at her. But yet here we are. So my thing is, it and it's crazy, especially with comedians. It's this. It's really awkward because if you actually listen to like Gilbert and I both love. We we love comedy. We're students of comedy and stand up comedy. But we both love Kevin Hart. Like, before Kevin Hart blew up, like, we would religiously listen to Seriously Funny and I'm a Grown Little Man. And if you listen to Kev's early stuff... He was cheating. Like, he was... It was very clear he was cheating. Very clear. Did that stop me from listening I'm in, to I'm him? in a club with a girl on my left. Girl on my left. Girl, girl on my right. right. You just talked about your wife and kids two minutes ago, Kev. But we la we're laughing, right? So I think ex since he's blown up, like Kevin Hart is an international superstar. Like there's no arguing that. But I think he has made so much of a brand about being this just all-American, funny, happy-go-lucky good guy that I don't know if he recovers from this. You think he's going to hurt his brand? Yeah. So like literally the name of his new tour, I think, is Irresponsible or something like that. No, it's not. Is it? Y yes. And it's like, I don't. I don't know if I want to hear this, Kev. Like, 
fool me once, shame on <laughs> shame on you. Fool me twice, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to hear another go round about you talking about mm. being drunk and like cheating on or being drugged and cheating on your wife. Like I don't want to hear that. So I, I think that this is really gonna hurt Kev. Like you can tell even in his social media presence, like Kev is awkwardly trying to do his funny, like every every day happy go lucky Kev stuff and it's not working. It's like, I don't want to see you training for your marathon, Kev. You cheated on your pregnant wife on her birthday. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's, kind of trash. it's it's a weird it's a weird conundrum that we're in right now with Kevin Hart. But, you know what I mean? I saw him live already, so I'm good. I'm you good. trash. But, uh, <laughs> back, so back to the point, though. So and so I, I guess the answer to the question of does our artist's personal life matter, the answer to that question is it, it depends on what they did, mm-hmm. and it depends on who they are, essentially. Right? Cause it's like you still, I've, I've said this before, but you still step in the name of love when that was, song comes on at the wedding, don't I you? I love how you bring this man up. I'm just saying. Listen, there has there has yet to be a reunion that I've been to where we didn't step in the name of love. I also think it depends on how they handle it, right? Okay. Because it's like we have now confirmed that Jay Z cheated on Beyonce. Yes. But he was very contrite about it. Yeah. He made a, a, a heart-wrenching song about it, talked about the effects of it, how that affected him, how that affected their unborn children or whatever. Mm-hmm. All we got from Kevin Hart was that trash apology on Instagram. Well, well, let's look at the situations, though. In both in both Kevin Hart's situation and in R. Kelly's situation, if you want to go there, they didn't control the narrative. Mm-hmm. This was them being reacting to the situation. You know, mm. Kev had to come out with that apology because he knew he was about to be extorted. Mm. You know what I mean? R. Kelly had to say what he said, and he had to come out with his I Believe I Can Fly and Thank You, Lord, CDs, because this fool was on trial. You're saying Jay didn't have to confirm it. But this. Jay didn't have to confirm it. Beyonce let her feelings out first. I mean, even even the, the incident in the elevator, they controlled that. I mean, B spent that whole situation on a verse with Nicki Minaj and just pretended like it wasn't nothing. Mm-hmm. Then she put out Lemonade, and gave Jay time to come back and react. You know what I mean? Like, they controlled that narrative. So I feel like that plays a part in it. If you're up front, up front and forthcoming about what you're, what's going on, I think that helps. Like, people like honesty. I'm with you. You know what I mean? But if you're reacting to it, I ain't got, I ain't got time for you. You didn't got caught. And I have no time <clears throat> for side chicks. I'm, we understand, SZA. Um, But, Stop. so what I... um. What I think is interesting is a lot of people will say that they don't care about uh, what their personalities, what their artists do off screen. But I will submit to you evidence that we do care about the person that the artist is. Mm -hmm. Cardi B is number one, not on the hip hop charts, not on the female charts, not on the pop chart, but in the world. Can we go ahead and give she up? Is ooh, number ooh, one ooh, for Cardi B. Bodak Yellow is number yes. one. Cardi, right? you deserve to make all the money moves today, boo boo. We're proud of you. The reason I bring that up though is because Cardi B, by and large, we have to attribute a lot of her success to the fact that people like and gravitate to her personality. Mm-hmm. It's not necess- I'm not saying that Bodak Yellow isn't a good song. I, I said on this podcast before Bodak Yellow blew up. And said, "Yo, this yes. song is lit, right?" Yeah. But by and large, people like Cardi B. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if Cardi B were to come out and do something ridiculous or messed up that was immoral or against our morals, right? A lot of people would be like, "Man, I don't mess with Cardi B anymore because we like Card. We like who Cardi B is as a person." I mean, we kind of saw this this week. I don't know if y'all saw, but Cardi <clears throat> B kind of made a a racially insensitive comment towards Kim Jong Un. Um, where she kind of said something where she shouldn't have and people were kind of on the fence about that but it was crazy I was listening to another podcast that I love and one of them made the statement of you know Cardi we're going to let this slide because you're just now getting into the limelight you're just now like we're going to have to learn you're going to have to learn how to deal with your ignorant side um, in the spotlight and I think that's interesting like we are awarding her that opportunity to, to falter because we like her as a person so it's like, oh, it's okay because Cardi has always been ignorant out here doing the most, so we're gonna allow her to do that. Um, I think that's crazy, man. That's that's something that we're gonna have to look at. It just depends on the situation. It is fashionable to like Cardi B now. It is, it is. But I hate to be that person, but you can go all the way back to go the back. first episode. We were of the here. EBS podcast. EBS. 
We, we don't have a theme song. We, but that's, um, it, that's it. No, we don't have a theme song. That's just it. Azalea Banks. Who? Azalea. <laughs> who? Azalea Banks. I don't know who that is. Let me tell you what Azalea Banks had to say about Cardi B. She's irrelevant? She said, okay. I'm sorry. Black industry men are too hyped for this Latina girl. I've never seen them jump like this for Remy or Nikki. Spinning this for the culture story when they are simply letting white men at Atlantic buy them into hating their own women. So check this out. I'm all for the self-hate narrative, right? I tell um, when when self-hate is happening, I'm going to call it out. Call right? it out, boo. My question is, why do we love Cardi B? And is Azalea Banks right in that we haven't championed other black female artists? While you think about it, I'm going to tell you definitively no. Okay. Right? <laughs> Go ahead. No, she's not right is what I mean. Okay. Because in about five minutes, you're going to hear me rant for a long time about a young lady named Rhapsody because she is amazing. Yeah. Right? The whole world stopped for Sheether. Yeah, And did. we was all talking about Sheether. Everyone. Nikki might be cold right now. But? But there was a time around 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 the truffle butter time. Mm-hmm. We we loved us some Nikki, Nikki was right? Off. So I don't I don't think uh, and it's, I, I didn't like the fact she specifically called out black men, right? But it, I can speak for myself. I, I champion black female hip hop. We was there for young Ma. Yes, and ooh, you know what I mean. Ooh. So I don't I don't I don't think there's any. I don't I don't think that there's a leg to stand on with this argument. But what I'll say is we like Cardi because we like. What we we like the com- a a we like the come up story yes and b we like Cardi's swag. Listen, as far as Azalea Banks goes, I think that a broken wheel squeaks the loudest. I think you need to be quiet, Azalea. Relative to what? Be quiet, Azalea. <laughs> Unbroken wheels. There it is. Boom. <laughs> be quiet, Azalea. We don't want to hear from you. Go sit down somewhere. We like Cardi B because she's putting out good stuff, and that's it. Bodak Yellow was a hit. That's it. We're going to champion her. Azalea, if you had something out that was fire right now and you actually happened to keep your mouth shut, we might champion you too. That's it. That's it. Shout out to Azalea Banks. Rhapsody's album is amazing. Go for it. Did you listen to Rhapsody's album? I did. It's called Layla's Wisdom. I did. What did you think about it? I thought it was fantastic. Um, I didn't know anything about Rhapsody until you texted me and said, hey, listen to this album. You did though. Um, Complexion. Oh, that's right. On that's right, that's Kendrick's right. album. That's right. That's her on there. That's right. I she didn't body that verse. Yeah, she did. I didn't I didn't realize that was her. Um, but I listened to it. It was real good. Um bars are bars are hidden. Uh, my favorite song, I can't think of the name of it, but it's the one with Buster Rhymes on there because I love me some Buster. Yeah, yeah. Um and the, I think that the production album on his album is fantastic. Ninth like, Wonder I, did his thing. I felt myself grooving and vibing to almost every single track on this album. This almost is it's every a, single um, one. I'm almost willing to say that there are no real skippables on that on this. Like I like every no, it, song the flow on the CD. is CD. Fantastic. Um, like you said, the production is amazing. And here's the mark, right? Tell me. About four songs in, mm-hmm. I realized that I was not, I was not listening to a female rapper's CD. I was listening to a rapper that raps. Yeah, really, really well. Yeah, like I was, I was, I wasn't saying is she better than Cardi? Is she better than Remy? When I got to the end of that album, I sat back and I said, I need to listen to this again so I can decide if this is better than Damn. Mm. Like, like when you when you listen to Power, the song that Kendrick is on, mm-hmm. Kendrick brought his A game on that flow, and he didn't wash her. Mm. Like they was, she held her they own. were, they were necking. Like she, she stood on a track with one of the best rappers out right now. Like I think that this is, it's a little reactive because I'm just listening to it this week. I've listened to it four times. Um, Let it simmer a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but my my initial grade is a four point five out of five. Okay, and it's my, um, it's probably my third favorite rap album this year behind Damn and Four Four Four. So it's like that's, mm. I think that's saying a lot. It's a, it's a and I listen to a lot of rap, y'all. Yeah, it's better than Dave East album. It's better than Vic Mensa album. Ooh. Like it's 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 better than she's rapping better than most of you dudes, man. Did like, Color and Book come out this year? Or last year, Color and Book came out last year technically, 
I might like this album better than Coloring Book. I haven't listened to Coloring Book in a long. Coloring Book is not my favorite it's... Chance project. No, but I think cohesively, I love Coloring Book. But I have a question for you. I don't know. We kind of wanted to go here, but are we going to get to a point where we stop categorizing female rap artists as female rap artists? Yeah, when they rap just... as good as Rhapsody. Okay, Rhapsody is just she just like I said she's just a rapper to me. I don't I'm not I'm not comparing her solely to Remy and Nicki and I'm I'm looking at this album. I'm saying is this better than Damn? Is she better than Kendrick? Rhapsody can like she can rap like bars like she she's rapping. She carries melodies well. She was riding pockets on those songs that I didn't recognize. And and again I've told you this before on the podcast. The thing that I look at when I'm looking at rap is I look at the technical aspects of rap. So yeah. How are you riding a beat? What pockets are you hitting? What's your rhyme schemes? Like she's, she was killing it, man. But yeah, to your point, I think, I think we do get to the point where we say, you know, is where we stop categorizing people as female rappers. But it's it's only when you're really good at it, right? Yeah. A lot of people that are in rap don't categorize Eminem as a white rapper. It's usually people that are looking from outside of the culture that call Eminem a white rapper. Eminem is just a good rapper. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I, I I feel like that I feel that way about Rhapsody. I, like that album was amazing. Um, That's you, off to you, boo. I like that. To me or Rhapsody? To Rhapsody, not you. Okay. Come on now. You brought up Chance. Chance has a new song with Daniel Caesar. Yes, he performed it he on what was that? The late late show. One of them shows. It was on Colbert's show. Mm-hmm. And, um, the late late. I don't know what the name of the show is anymore. I just call it Colbert show. Sure. Um, how'd you feel about that song? I loved it. Has he released it? Like, released it, released it, or did he just perform it? I think he just performed it. He did release that the song is called Hashtag uh, First World Problems. Mm -hmm. That song was really good. Yes, it was. Um, What kind of, I don't want to say upset me, but um, somebody that I really, really like and admire, um, Mr. Uh, Joe Budden, um, he came out, and I know he was just joking, right? But he said, um, you got to get out of here with all this positive stuff. And I'm so tired of people just looking on the surface at a song because he was speaking softly and it was acoustic. He assumed that it was all just butterflies and rainbows, right? Yeah. But I'm gonna re- I'm gonna read two snippets from the song because I think it's very very interesting. Um, some of the bars went, "I'm a rich excuse for a father. You can't just tour a toddler. She turned in two. She don't need diapers. She really just need her papa. I really need a break. I could use a nap." My daughter barely recognized me when I lose the hat. That is not a happy verse, right? No. He's saying, "My, I'm on tour so much that my daughter doesn't know who I am if I'm not wearing what she sees me wear on TV, yeah. right? And what I really, really thought was interesting, I'm not just going to sit here and read bars all day, right? But I think I thought that this was very, very poignant, and this is why I thought this song was amazing, right? These are These are the words that he said in front of a 99% white audience on a show that is primarily watched by white people. He said, I'm just going to keep rapping and y'all just keep clapping and acting like Flint got clean water and y'all don't got teen daughters and black friends and gay cousins and y'all just ain't going to say nothing. But the day's coming, knees bowed, tongues confessing, the last one's getting first dibs on blessings. Now these are just first world problems that N-words make up. Keep playing and we're going to shake this up. Keep on telling us that we making it up. The American dream. May you never wake up. Mm. It makes it, it. I was amazed by this because he said specifically, I, I had this slot to perform and then the NFL protest happened and I said, I can't perform the song that I was going to perform. Yeah. So he wrote this song specifically to address what was going on at this point in time. And I think that it's amazing that he came out and he said, I'm up here rapping and you're white and you're clapping for me, a black man enjoying this entertainment. And you're right. just going to sit there and pretend like all of this stuff isn't happening to my people. Yeah. But later for all that yeah. revolution is coming. And I think that it's awesome that he was able to say that on an acoustic song with a soft voice in a palatable manner. And he delivered that message to the people that needed to hear that message most. And I, th- I thought that that was dope, but I apologize for reading bars on podcasts, but I thought that those bars were awesome. I thought that that song was awesome. All of the Kardashians are pregnant. <laughs> like, all of them. Same time. <laughs> I think it's a promo move. It could be. Let's be real. Like, their season is just about to come out. They needed fall sweeps. Like, let's be real. Um, and I'm sorry, but 
I mean it. I think that Chris Kardashian is a mastermind. She's out there and she's pimping her daughters out. Let's be real. If I had five or six daughters that could be out here, they're pretty, they can make money for me. I mean, I may do what Chris is doing, but if you need to make false sweeps, you need money, you need viewers. Hey, 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 Kylie, why don't you go out there and uh, let Travis get a little? You know what I mean? Like, I like I don't, I don't put that past her. I don't put that past is, the Kardashians. Right? Is Kylie, Kim, and Kanye surrogate? No. What? <laughs> no. It's possible. No. I mean, the timelines. It's just the timeline is real is it, weird. Is it? Is this an accident? The real thing that I'm worried about is Chloe and what's his name, Tristan Thompson. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have the world's biggest baby. And baby's gonna be because Chloe's at least a solid seven foot thirteen. Like he's like that baby is gonna be ginormous. Like you know, that's not how stuff. that's not how inches work. Tell me more. You can't be seven foot thirteen. Don't you tell me how to do math. That'd be eight foot one. <laughs> I never liked you. <laughs> oh, I yeah, never liked but, you at all. But yeah, all, but the, I mean, all the Kardashians are pregnant. If I can be real, everybody was freaking out. And in my head, I was like, I you just don't care. I don't care at all. Like, I checked. I searched high and low. Couldn't find anywhere where I gave any cares about the Kardashians. <laughs> so, I mean. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. <laughs> yeah, like, I literally just can't. So, congratulations. Babies are a blessing. <laughs> don't <laughs> I don't care about your Kardashian babies. Blessings um, what I blessings. will say though is that Kim has been posting pictures of uh Saint and he's adorable. Also Kanye is looking um thick and happy. So that makes me excited. Have you seen the pictures of Kanye? Yeah, we not we not gonna blaspheme uh yeah. No, I love Kanye. Man. I hope he's getting better, man. I'm ready for that new music, Kanye. You know. I love you, boo. <sighs> yeah. Shout out. Did I just put you in some kind of mood? No, no. I didn't um, mean to. <laughs> you saw it. The movie? Yes, it. The movie. Yes. Oh. <laughs> How did you yes, feel I about did it? Yes, I did see it. Um, it was interesting. So I didn't see the original it, and I didn't read uh, the source material. I'm probably going to go back and read it. Um, I don't like scary movies, or at least I don't like to watch them alone. So when I go to see a scary movie, it has to be in the theaters, and it has to be with a group of friends. With that being said, this movie really wasn't scary. Like there were more, there were like maybe one or two jump scares that were kind of cheap that got me. But other than that, it was kind of like, all right, it it's whatever. It was funny. I think in this day and age right now, child, like children actors are fantastic. Like you have to be on your A game. These kids actors sold the movie, man. They were fantastic. <clears throat> Homeboy from Stranger Things was in there. I can't think of his name, but he killed it. Mm. Um, but it was it was good. It was cool, man. Um, I haven't seen it. I know Gilbert doesn't watch scary movies. I watch scary movies, and it's fine. This really wasn't like this. Honestly, wasn't a scary movie. I'm not gonna pay you to be scared. Cause I, don't I mean, you can watch it for free. That's true. But I'll be scared for free. I will be scared for free. It's fair. No, real life is scary enough. I don't need to, <laughs> to be scared. <laughs> but no, it was it was interesting. But like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay on it for too long. But it was alright. It was cool. Go ahead, Pennywise. I'll give you a thing. So before we um, clown suck, uh, before we get into <laughs> our, um... can we talk about clowns real quick? Whose idea was to let these scary mofo's come into children' birthdays? Clowns are terrifying. They are terrifying. Like they're just weird. They're just men painted up, <laughs> scaring children. The original Chris Jenner's. I hate no, Caitlyn you. Jenner. That's I hate one. you. That's I knew one. what you were doing. Yeah. I don't have time. Because it's men wearing makeup is what I was. Gonna distance myself. So tr- let me read a Trump tweet really quick. This is the perfect segue into Trump. Uh, Trump didn't say you did. It's fine. The booing at the NFL g- football game last night, when the entire Dallas team dropped to his knees, was the loudest I have ever heard. Great, Great anger. anger. Oh. Great anger. Great anger. You can use Trump to deflect from anything ridiculous that you say, because <laughs> he said something more ridiculous. I it's love fine. that. It's fine. <laughs> I need to have a stash of Trump tweets just on my phone at all times. Really just have I'm, all the Trump y'all, tweets. Gilbert literally has screenshotted <laughs> dozens of Trump tweets just ready right. to go. So before we jump into our list for today, um, I want we watch a lot of, or at least I try to watch. That's how I wind down. I wind down by watching TV. There's a show called Chewing Gum on Netflix, <laughs> Bruh, If you if you podcast listeners have not watched Chewing Gum, 
Let me warn you. Okay. The first 10 minutes of the first episode are very difficult to get through. It's, it's cringeworthy, right? But if you get through them first 10 minutes on that first episode, I promise you that you will laugh. <laughs> it is it is fantastic. Chewing gum is ridiculous. It is fantastic. It's taken me a couple of uh, run-throughs to be able to get like get through the first episode, but once you once you do, it's the British version of Insecure. It is. <laughs> Just on a different level. It's, it's fantastic. It's so it makes me so uncomfortable. In a funny way. I'm not gonna. I'm, I don't want to drop any spoilers, but. right? Just watch Chewing Gum. It's on Netflix. It's funny. You can thank me later. Another show that I started watching was Ozark. Have you started Ozark yet? I have not. You should watch Ozark. That's the one with uh, Jason Bateman. Yes, I love him. It's a uh, Ozark is, re- and that's one of those shows where that's um, the opposite of Chewing Gum. Ozark is really dark. Ozark is a, um, it's like a Breaking Bad type show okay but it, it's um it's really i haven't finished it yet uh, i'm on episode 10 so i'm on the finale so uh but it, it's um it's really good i encourage you guys to go listen to that um we forgot um, to say this earlier but you can follow us on instagram you yep. can follow us on twitter ebs podcast mm-hmm. holla at us hit us up let, Let us know. know what you're thinking. There it is. Also, another show before we move on um, that's kind of in the middle of those two things is a show called Atypical. Um, I had seen it advertised for a couple of months, but it's about a boy that's uh, on the spectrum. And it's it's so funny. <laughs> like, I can't tell you how funny the show is, but it's also super real. And Gilbert and I were talking earlier, I guess off air, about how sitcoms and, and shows, in order to be successful and truly hit home, you have to have that good balance of comedy slash realness and atypical does that in a fantastic and lighthearted way so if you are in the mood for something that's not super super serious but also will pull out your heartstrings a little bit and you want to laugh i think atypical is a good look um netflix is just the place to be so hit at it but you know that's all i got really that's all i got about netflix let's jump into our list man <sighs> i don't want to so this is a difficult list um we're, we're gonna admit up front that the categorization the categorization the category you, you that be, we're gonna go ahead and make up words hey look my strategy for this Ooh, podcast okay right, is for me not to be a dotard so um anyway the category that we were trying to do today was our top five Favorite. We're not saying that these are the best in any way, but these are our favorite female R and B slash soul vocalists whose name is not Beyonce. So most of these top five lists that we do, um, I don't want to say that they're easy, but sometimes you have like a definite that you know, okay, that's my number one, and then you kind of go from there and really think about how you feel about the other four. This list was so weird because you'd pick one artist. Well, then she would lead into another artist, but you're like, is that R&B? Right. Is that kind of R&B? Like, is, is that, Adele, is that is Adele R&B? Yeah. Like, it's is Jill Scott R&B. So, I want to preface what my What do you do li- with Amy Winehouse? What do you do with her? She's R- Amy Winehouse is R&B soul. She's a soul singer to me. So, that's the thing. Like, I love Amy Winehouse, but I didn't put her on my list because I didn't consider her R&B. So let's, but then she's soul. But we said R&B soul. So we'll do another list. To cover off on. I just want to preface this list by saying that I don't feel... This is the first time that I truly do not feel confident in my list. And I know, like, we have some very avid listeners that, like, to come through with the arguments. Come for Lindsay with these and arguments. And it's fine. Like, I'm here for it. Like, I had a very heated debate the other day about Beyonce, and that's fine. I love it. And I do love that. Thank you guys so much for arguing with Lindsay about Beyonce. <laughs> that makes me so happy. There were a couple of uh, a couple of folks on Twitter that were asking about classic rap albums. I will get into those debates all day, so we definitely appreciate and so that. We love the interaction. Um, definitely keep doing that. You're wrong, but we love the interaction. Now, um, I'm just saying, this this list, for me personally, I don't, I'm not ashamed of it, but I don't like it. So you don't like your you're prefacing <laughs> the list that you want the listeners to listen to with you don't like it. I don't like it. I love my list. My list is lit. Can I get into my honorable you know mentions? What? Go ahead, boo. My honorable mentions. Live your life. Hey. My honorable mentions to people that did not make my list but that I love, mm-hmm. right? And I'm a I'm going to preface this up front. I know that you're going to be mad, but my list your of list. 5 has 6 people on. I'm I hate everything about There's you. There's a substitute on my list. You're but, a substitute. All right. My honorable mentions. Aaliyah. I like Aaliyah. She didn't make my list though. She's not in my top five. Okay. You dig? 
Um, Rihanna is not, she was not considered because we're saying that she's popping B. Yeah. So she wasn't you considered. Poppin B? Poppin B. I don't know. Like she wasn't that. considered. But I got two other names for my honorable mentions that's going to trip you out. Give it to me. Adina Howard. <sighs> T-shirt and my panties on. T-shirt and my panties All right, let's not sing that. Okay. Um, but Adina Howard. And then my next honorable mention, Kelis. <laughs> Kelis died. You know what? Kelly's not, had a run. I'm not happy with that choice. <laughs> it's honorable but mention. I want to honorably mention her, but she didn't make my list. But I'm not mad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not mad. What's your number five, girl? So I have an honorable oh, you mention. Honorable Don't you jump through? You yeah. So like I said, I don't support my list. But <laughs> um, my right, we're only going to do my list. No, this my is... my alternates are all over the place. I have alternates that could very well be number one on this list. So Rihanna, of course. So I put... One of my alternates is Mary J. Blige. Mm. I love Mary J. I you think she's fantastic. You come with the 90s R&B. That's what I'm talking about. I think she's fantastic. Mary didn't make uh, my main list, but just with her dance moves alone, she has made the honorable mentions. Next up, Erica Badu. Um, Erica Badu is fantastic. She's a legend. Didn't make the list, but called Tyrone Boo. Mm. Next up, Anita Baker. I love Anita. She cool. Okay. Didn't make the list, okay. but I had to shout her out. And then the last one, and this is this is random. <clears throat> it's not random though. Um, Tony Braxton. So our mother, you better sing Gilbert silently. This is good for podcast. So to, our mother used to play out Tony Braxton's first self-titled album. So I grew up listening to Tony Braxton, and there are songs that she has that I just can't get out of my head that are fantastic, like early Tony. Is hot fire, but does Tamar sing better than Tony? I don't even know what a Tamar is. Oh, get your life, boo! No, get your life. Tony is the only Braxton that counts. So, <laughs> sorry, Tamar, I can't. But yeah, that's my that's my alternate list. All right, you want you want to jump into your number five, or you want me to go? You got it. All right, so my number five, I, I'm with you. I think I think. <laughs> Listen, we messed there's up. There's gonna be we no. We did up. not. I I love my list, but I can already hear. People trying to debate me about this category. Let's but do it. My number five is Shade. I love Shade. Smooth, Smooth operator. operator on there. You know what I'm saying? I love I love Shade. You ever heard that song? Your love is king. Yes, I love that song. It's a great song. I love Shade, man. Um, but yeah, Shade is Shade. Shade is a man of the other. Why did I sing that song? I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> What's your number five, bro? I don't even okay. want to talk about you. I don't even want. I had a list of songs to read about Sade. I don't even want. To I'm read sorry. Them. I, I don't apologize even want to read them for now. messing up the podcast. Hmm. Okay, so my number five, um, I'm hesitant about because she's relatively new, mm. but I'm gonna give it to her. Um, <laughs> no pun intended. My number five is her, like H E R. Uh, her. Are you serious? Yeah. So I think that. It's real. It's real early. Like I, it's super early, right? Yeah. But I, the two pieces of work that she's put out, I have thoroughly enjoyed. Oh, like yeah. I remember, I was cleaning up my apartment, and her song came on "Say It Again," and I stopped my entire day and said, "I need to listen to everything that this girl has." And I don't. Like, there's no debate. She is full on R and B, and I. Like, her is R and B. That's for it. Sure. And I feel like true to its roots. Nice lyrics on point. Nice voice. I. I love it. So, her, you have worked your way into my number five, and of I all time, of all time, you put in her over Anita Baker. Listen, I told you that I didn't feel confident <laughs> about my list. <laughs> and like Erica Blige, and Erica Badu. Oh, so, her. so let's not do this. Listen, her please, is, her this is, is the lit. one week I will say, do not just do not come for me. Yes, right, don't tweet me. Yes, her. I see I'm, you. I'm ashamed. <laughs> All right, so my number four, um, my number four is a name of a woman, but there is a substitute. Okay, so what? I have to, I have to, I have to ask a question first. We didn't ask for riddles. I have to ask. A <laughs> that was very, we it was very cryptic. My name is the name behind the name, but who's the guest name? Is Corinne Bailey Ray R and B soul? <laughs> 
Because if if we're gonna consider Corinne Bailey Ray R and B Soul, she's gonna be my number four. Okay. Corinne Bailey the the album titled Corinne Bailey Ray. I don't. I, I understand it didn't get a lot of critical acclaim. I understand that some of you did. may disagree or whatever, but that is that is one of my top three favorite albums ever made. Yeah, well, I I love that album. Same. Right. Um. So she she needs to be mentioned on my list. If you say that Corinne Bailey Ray is in her own lane, she's not because I think she's on the on the fringe of what we used to consider neo soul. I think she's on the fringe of that, yeah. right? But if she's not R and B, this is my sub. If she's not R and B soul, Amy Winehouse gets this spot. Go ahead, Amy. She gets this spot. Celebrate. Amy Wine. I, I don't. Amy Winehouse translated pain to music in a way that maybe ten people in the history of music have ever been able to. I do. love Amy Winehouse. Like. When she was talk, what she she made that song rehab, and I know everybody knows oh. this. I know I know that everybody knows this, right? It hurts my heart every time I think about the situation. But she was like, that was real. Like, they tried to make me go to rehab, but I said no. Or no. even, <laughs> or even back to black when when she's talking about falling into the drug addiction mm-hmm. because of this relationship, mm-hmm. and she's talking about. You'll go back to her, but I'll I'm gonna go back to this crack, which is gonna seem like that's. But the song is amazing. You, you know, know that I'm no good like, is probably still one of my top ten favorite songs of all time. And then I, I just I don't know. I, I love, love Amy. Amy. I love Amy Winehouse, man. Um, so that's that's my number four. Okay, so I'm also gonna say Corinne Bailey Ray. She's not my number four, but she needs to be on her own list. I also thoroughly love her and enjoy her. I'm mad my best friend got to see her in Seattle a couple weeks ago. So Corinne Bailey Ray is number one on the list of top five Corinne Bailey Ray. There it is. All right, so my number four. So I'm not gonna say her name right. I can never say her name right, but she has earned the number four spot. Um, Marsha Ambrosius. Hey, flow a tree. Flow a tree. All you gotta do. Ma- yes. Marsha, you have number four. She- I hope she cheats on you. <laughs> that, listen, let me get there. Let me get there. Okay, so first off, Marsha, again, is undeniably R&B. Yeah, yeah. And her writing skills are unlike no other. One of my favorite Michael Jackson songs of all time is Butterflies. When I found out that she wrote Butterflies and then I heard her version of Butterflies, I said, yes, ma'am, all day. I'll take two sides of it. Um, I love Marsha. She's fantastic. That's an excellent pick, sis. Her lyrics, fantastic. Her flow, far away, still gives me... Like, I still shed tears, I think, almost every single time I listen to that song. Um, Marsha's fantastic. Um, I hope she cheats on you with a basketball player. If you haven't heard that song, <laughs> what's, what's your favorite Marsha album? Do you um, like Late Nights, Early Mornings? It's got to be Late Nights and Early Mornings. I like the new one. Um, late Nights, late nights Early, Early Mornings. Mornings. It's a classic, just, right? It, it has to be. Hey, y'all, y'all uh, if you like R&B, holla at us on either Twitter or Instagram or our Gmail and let us know if you think that Late Nights, Early Mornings is a classic. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to have that conversation. I think that's a classic album. Yeah. That's a I, good pick, sis. I agree. And also, um, if you're a fan of Marsha and you haven't seen some of her interviews out there, she is very raunchy and she dishes out a lot of drama mm. that went on with Flow Tree. That's very funny to listen to. So yeah, that's my number four. Marsha, love you, boo. All right. Um, my number three. So you're going to quickly realize that I have a type that his list is like there's there's a no I I I stand by my list my list is solid I think uh, especially my top three, uh, but but I I definitely have a type my list I'm looking at my list my list is mostly what people would consider neo soul right but mm-hmm. uh, I'll get right into it my number three is Lauren Hill although she only uh, Lauren Hill is technically a rapper. Mm-hmm. And although she only has one R and B, I don't. The Miseducation is R and B CD. It just is. I'm not arguing. Uh, and it is one of the. It's one of the best classic female R and B song um, albums ever. Right. So uh, Lauren Hill is on my list. She's my number three, and I'm not even gonna defend it. I'm just gonna put it out there. Lauren Hill, she on my list. There it is. We'll come back. To I don't that. listen to Anita Baker. Lauren Hill <laughs> on my list. Did you just diss Anita Baker? Patti LaBelle has good pies. But Lauren Hill on my list. You are being disrespectful. <laughs> I hate it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Wow. Okay, so my number three. You know what? The more that I go, like, I wasn't wholeheartedly into my list, but now that I'm talking about it, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Because I think Gilbert cheated the system. He went Neo Soul, 
And I think that I, I think I truly went R&B. My number three to me also embodies R&B, and that is Brandy. Now, hey, baby, 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 Brandy, like '90s Brandy, good R&B Brandy. I love Brandy. Just sitting up in my room, Brandy. I don't know. There's just something about Brandy that reminds me of my childhood. I think to the mo to the e to the, but <laughs> I think Brandy is full on R&B. And I think that what Brandy and Monica did in the early 2000s and the late 90s changed R&B. <coughs> and they're a staple in R&B. I think it's unfortunate now that that Brandy's star has kind of changed and and wind down. You're talking to about Ray things. J's sister. Um, now she's Ray J's sister, which is bizarre to me. But Brandy still has talent. She's still out here hooping and hollering. She actually released a song um, that's not trash. So I support you, Brandy, because she, I don't know. She's had a rough couple of years, but I love Brandy, early 90s Brandy, late 90s Brandy, early 2000s, like full moon Brandy. I'm on board with it. So Brandy's my number three. <laughs> my favorite Brandy moment Stop. is her uh, her feature on Kanye West late registration. Cause hey, hey, the N words marry hey, the women and that hey, the kids. I hate it. <laughs> That's a hot bar. But also, uh, pause. One of my favorite Kanye features is talk about our love ooh, with Brandy. I love that. I forgot. You don't remember when hits. you was my sweetest? You don't remember I call you Reese's Pieces? Cause there's no wrong way to do. You know what? I love. Come on now, be real. I love Brandy. Brandy got some hits, man. Brandy had hits, man. Let's not dog Brandy. But yeah, that's my number three. Um, my number three again. Oh no, I did my number three. My number two, not gonna defend it again. Just gonna put it out there. My number two is Erica Badu. Mm. Erica Badu, man, is mm. Mama's gun. I encourage you. Can I get a window seat? I, <laughs> I encourage you. When window seat came out, well, I still remember when window seat came out. I played that song nonstop for at least a week like that was all i listened to for a week just on repeat and it's one of those songs that that like you can't tell when it starts and when it finishes yeah if you just keep so i just let it go anyway mama's gun to, I, i'll put mama's gun on right now i'm not not skip a song this I love is what i'll say about erica you single-handedly changed the way that i approach towels i have never worn a towel on my head better since i saw erica Badu. so yes erica <laughs> <laughs> What's your number two, girl? <laughs> All right. So my number two is ridiculous. So my number two is actually two people. One of which you is already... You Gilbert. So I put a Gilbert. And one of them you've already mentioned. So half of my number two is Lauren Hill. Um, but Gilbert's already touched on Lauren Hill, so I won't go there. But Miss Education, clearly a classic. It was monumental in my life. I love Miss, Miss Education. I think that Lauren Hill is fantastic. Yes, she's a rapper, but you can't deny that she's R&B. And that album is fantastic. So my other number two is not Lauryn Hill. It is one of the greatest divas and vocalists of all time. Wait, let me try. Can I try to guess? Sure. Greatest divas and... No, I'm not going to guess. Go no, ahead. no, guess. No, no, I'm not going to guess. Diva? I feel like I'm giving it to you. It's got to either be Mariah Carey or Whitney. I pondered Mariah. I pondered Mariah. She should have been in my alternates. It's Whitney Houston. It's hand down Whitney. Um... I love Whitney, even though Whitney was one of those that I paused because I was like, Whitney kind of veered into pop, kind of, if you... I mean, it's pop when you're popular. It's pop when you're popular, and you can't... Who was more popular than Whitney? Let's let's be real. Whitney changed the game. Mariah. You better, you better take your words back, sir. <laughs> Tread carefully here. Um, Whitney Houston is the GOAT, so I'm going to leave it there. Yeah, God bless you. <laughs> love you, Whitney. Um... It's time for my number one. My number you one. You know what? Can we do a joint number one? Because I feel you think it's gonna be the same. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure that our number one is the same. I love my number one. My name is J I L L S C O T T. Yes. Yes, sibling power. <laughs> yes, my number one is also. We didn't plan that, by no, the way. We didn't. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but my my number one is also Jill Scott. Jill I, uh, Scott is number one. It wasn't even a question. Jill Scott is everything that is R and B and neo soul. I love Jill Scott, man. She um, I saw her live. What was that? You dirty dog. Three years ago. She sounds exactly the same. <sighs> like she's she's fantastic. Like Jill Scott, 
from a from a like man from a from oh a gosh. from a writing perspective get it like the way that she writes her, the way that she structures her material is fantastic mm-hmm. her voice i think might literally be butter oh it is um melting like she's she, I don't know, man. Like she, even her later stuff. Um, I, some people aren't fans of her later stuff, but I love it. But um, the the first her debut album is is absolutely amazing, man. Um, I love Jill, man. And the thing about Jill that I like is that Jill has been able to. She's had some longevity, man. Yes, yeah, like does. like Jill is one of those people that like passed from generation because it's like. My parents like legit liked Jill, but I like Jill. Yeah, it's like yo, we used to go on road trips, and our parents would play the Jill. Like I associate her first album with road trips to New Orleans because that's what the parents would play on the way it's there. A great album, but that listen, her ability of storytelling it's crazy is second to none. Like just the way the way in which she gets her lyrics down, and she can switch from killing. From killing the song vocally to going right into spoken <clears throat> word pieces to getting in your feelings to having you laughing to talking about collard greens like it's it's bizarre. And he we loves me, bro. Listen, and I was about to go there. Um, that song, mm. the, that song still I've listened to that song literally thousands of times. Still gives me chills. It's amazing. still gives me chills. I can't. Jill Scott is everything. So let us know who your top five R and B slash soul female vocalists are you can hit us up at the ebs podcast on twitter or instagram um i meant to announce this at the beginning of the podcast so i'll announce it again on episode 11 but in honor of our 10th episode we are gonna do a amazon gift card giveaway give away give it away give it away ten dollars for 10 episodes as our way of thanking you what our way of thanking you what for listening to the EBS podcast. Listen, the EBS podcast is doing money moves right now, yes. y'all. But what we need you to do, if you want to get the $10 Amazon gift card, what go. you have to do, what you gotta do is you have to share the podcast and tag us in it. Okay. So share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook. So those of you, We don't have our Facebook page up yet. That is coming soon. But if you share it on facebook take a screenshot of it and then send it to us and we'll enter you if you share it on twitter just add us and we'll enter you and if you share it on instagram uh or you can't share on instagram yeah so if you're on instagram go ahead and just tag a friend or two on one of our posts we're gonna post something right now tag a friend on one of our ebs posts and that'll get you entered in as well i like that i like that so hit us up the at the EBS podcast on Instagram and Twitter, but that's a uh, that's the show, man. This is this is this ten episodes, man. We really really appreciate you guys listening. And um, Cardi hey. B is number one. Hey, Cardi. Hey. Okay, okay, okay. Hey. Cardi B is this instrumental. I don't know what's going on here. We didn't talk about the four to D challenge. We didn't four to D. No, okay. We're not do that. Okay. No, no, no. Don't okay. do that. I talk on the podcast. For the D, I'm out here getting money. Hey, for what? For the D, yo, Lindsay spit these words every day. For the D, and this I'm over the, here killing it. This is a hey, for the D, a hey, I ball up, hit him with it. For the D, this has been hey, the EBS you podcast. Can't touch me, shake my dreads. This for is, the D, this is hey, so awkward. About to get it. You're right. You're my brother. I'm we just, shouldn't do this. <laughs> episode ten is in the books. Holla. <laughs> <laughs>